Hey, what's, what's up, up everybody? I recorded this video it's, uh, on Saturday, Memorial Day May 28th, 2022. It's about 1.30 like p.m. Hour and a half. It's 85 Fahrenheit, well, 29 hour Celsius. And a half and, uh, I'm in South Beach in Miami anything. Beach. And there Hope is a special well. event going on for Let Memorial Day weekend. This, uh, corner the Miami Beach Air and Sea Show. It like, uh, it's labeled as the greatest show above Earth. And uh, we're going to go and see it right now at the beach. Kind of I'm strange. at Washington what's Avenue at 9th Street. With that corner but there, we need but to walk about two or three blocks to the east that. to get to the beach itself. Let's move it over a little. This uh, show there celebrates all fixed. the United States <laughs> military, all five branches of it. My audio is playing. Oops. The Marines, the Army, the Air I wasn't supposed to have that playing either. Oh well, I guess uh, it's a learning curve, right? <laughs> all right, anyway, hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna be reacting to a bunch of New York City videos. So just to give those uh, people who really crave New York City content some uh, something to do, but I'm also looking forward to the New York City stuff because I'm from there and I'm kind of missing like what's going on there too so since I already like browse YouTube to see what's going on and uh, everything why not make a live stream and see it together so we'll see yeah a little bit of technical difficulties to start this <laughs> stream sorry about that but All right. What is going on here now? Uh, let me try. That's weird. Let me try removing this. Some more technical difficulties. Uh, oh, I think we're done. No, not yet. Okay, I guess you can see it now for the most part. Part of it is cut though, so I think that fixes that a little bit. Okay. Now I wonder All right, I think we're good now. Okay. <laughs> It's the day of technical difficulties, but all right, let's uh, I was really looking forward to seeing the Manhattan Henge. This is something I always look forward to seeing every year and um, the past few years I've tried to capture this event. Um, it's all been cloudy or rainy or like there was a cloud in the way. But uh, for those of you who don't know, the Manhattan Henge is when the sunset in New York City aligns perfectly with the Manhattan street grid. Hey, Bagels and Walks, what's up? Thanks for joining my last live stream. I'm glad you could uh, make it. Thank you so much. Let's see if this is working. Oh, there it is. Perfect. But, uh,. Actually, before I uh, before I load up my friend's live stream, I want to show you what it actually looks like. This is a time lapse that I took from Long Island City. Thousands of 
thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer. Is this music copyrighted for, first of all? Let's see. Oh, it's some epidemic sound, okay. I don't know about my old videos anymore. Where's the sunset? It's coming, it's coming. Look at that, this is epic. I still think this is one of the best Manhattan hinges I've ever gotten from Long Island City. I think this is back in 2016. Amazing. I think I actually use an iPhone for this too. When did I t take this? Oh, June 2020. Wow. I took it uh, May 31st, 2020. And uh, this was another one I took from Times Square. Why is the quality so bad? So basically, this is a phenomenon that happens twice a year. Once in May and another one in July. But it's best to see the Manhattan Henge at the major cross streets like 14th Street, 23rd Street, uh, 42nd Street. Yeah, Norma, it happens around Memorial Day and also I think July 14th or something like that. And uh, there's also the other Manhattan Henge too that doesn't really get talked about too much and that's the sunrise. And the sunrise happens like I think just past New Year's there's a sunrise Manhattan Henge which I tried to get from the High Line but it was cloudy that day as well. And the dates don't really get published too well for the uh, for the sunrise. You, you gotta kinda like calculate it yourself. But yeah, this is crazy. I don't know when I caught this one. Ju uh, July 15th. Looks like. No, I filmed it July 12th. Hey, uh, Barefoot Vlogger Terry, that's stunning better than Key West Sunset. I mean, uh, you can't beat it. We have New York City skyscrapers plus sunset. It literally like blinds you in your face. Like that's actually blinding. And uh, what is another one I did? I did a... Uh, I did another one cycling Manhattan Henge too. Uh, let's see. Oh, this one. 2018. This is actually the one where... Um, with my new TD double of credit card, I really... This is the one where I got featured in a news article. I just wish I pointed my camera a little bit higher here because you see more of the ground the whole time. And that was my fault. You see what I mean? It's like the camera's fo focusing down. But I rolled the entirety of 42nd Street during Manhattan Hench. You can see some of it still. I think the best part was uh, near Times Square. 
over here yeah look at this everyone just like stops what they're doing and go in the middle of the street and take pictures this is a uh, this is 7th Avenue here in Broadway and the police try to like shoot people from getting off the street and stuff but it doesn't really work too well because uh, there's just so many people wanting to do the same thing but yeah let's see if that uh, news article is here I, I need to look it up I wonder if it's still around It's a, uh, it was an AM New York article. Might be too old already. Yeah, right here. I can't believe that uh, I had a whole news article on me. Remarkable Manhattan Hench Sunset a soothing experience from a for Astoria cyclist. And there's me with a reflective vest, GoPro on my helmet, but it was pointed too low, so I was able to get like a little bit of it. The only time I had satisfactorily documented Manhattan Hench was in Long Island City in 2016, and this was a uh, two years later <laughs> let's see if I have that uh, video 2016 probably not this is this probably before I really got into YouTube yeah yeah it was because uh, I didn't get really start uploading until like the be beginning of 2017 so uh, yeah I have pictures of that old Manhattan hedge I literally like jumped over people's heads just to get a picture and then uh, long and behold I uh, I got into uh, video making on YouTube oh here's a Manhattan hedge sunrise I try to get it from the High Line at 23rd Street to the cable bill. forget all your passwords Bill pay on the TD Bank mobile app keeps this was a uh, December 7th 2018 so it happens around that time but unfortunately there are clouds blocking the whole way yeah Lena I had no uh, selfie stick then but this was the Manhattan Henge sunrise try to get it didn't really work but I got some nice clouds uh, though oops all right let's uh see what this year's Manhattan Henge brought for my friend NYC walking show so it looks like he started off in Bryant Park and he street would be packed headed towards Times Square. Hey Brennett Friedman, hello, thanks for joining. Juan Louis Matt saying what a shot looks like an opening to the movie, yeah. It does. He's from Spain, thanks for joining. Donna, welcome, glad to see Let's see what happened. An amazing sunset. New York City walking show. I also do post lots of reels behind. Post me on Instagram or. Wow! Look at all these people here in Times Square, for it. Yeah, uh, Lena, I saw a little bit of it. I didn't see the whole thing. I want to see like how the conditions were and the clouds and whatnot. It has to be better than the one I got in twenty twenty. The New York City walking show. Feel free to tag me. Zozo says today's hinge was a dud due to the clouds. I need to see it again. That's the sun going behind the uh, if you guys enjoying the it, skyline there. Consider subscribe and give a like. 
That's all I need. This is probably like the this is probably like the best that you could have gotten for the Manhattan Henge. I mean, even with the clouds there, the sun is so bright to just like peek through a little bit. Yeah, Sandra, exactly. It's like a little bit of a haze where the uh, where the middle of the street grid is. Thanks, Jared Connie, hopefully. More farther, I can't, but if I go, we might get disconnected. So I don't want to take rigs. I don't want to take rigs. I just want to be here. You will get the best view from here. Yeah, that's true because uh, when I was there, like I think like maybe two years ago or something, I tried live streaming Manhattan Henge. There are so many people who are using their phones at the same time, like instagram reels and live streams and whatnot that the service just slows to a crawl sometimes even though you're in the middle of times square when there's that many people it just overloads the uh, cell phone towers yeah barefoot uh it does look like a very cool sky reminds me of uh i don't know like it's not even new york This is the only location you can get the best view without any interest, inter, internet issue. And you know what's so crazy too? Um, I forget what year it was. I think maybe it's 2019. There was a power outage in New York City. And uh, I was on 72nd Street at the time. I was going to take the subway from 72nd Street to Times Square to look at Manhattan Henge. And... Uh, that was the same day that Manhattan Henge was. How crazy is that? I wonder if it shows up. Yeah, look at this. This was one of the freakiest things that's ever happened to New York City. This was a... Let's let this advertisement play. This happened in July uh, 2019. This was the second Manhattan Henge of that year. Because the first one's in May and then the second one's in July. But this is so crazy. Sophie, you remember the power cut video? Yeah, I was right here eating at a uh, ramen restaurant. And you know what's so crazy? Like um, where I was, that's where the power still stayed on. Everything below 72nd Street was offline. Like, there was no power, which was crazy. Like, there were people stuck in elevators. I even uh, walked the entire length here because the subways weren't running to Times Square, obviously. And I still wanted to see Manhattan Henge. I still saw Manhattan Henge at the end, which is the crazy thing. This combined uh, power outage and Manhattan Henge in the same video. Hi, everyone. Today is July 13th, 2019. 7:30 p.m. and I just got a report on my phone that there's a power outage in Manhattan and it affects everywhere from 42nd Street to 71st Street on the Upper West Side. This that that's so crazy, man. How I was there at the ramen restaurant like exactly at that time when the power outage happened and like the power didn't go out further from where I was eating. Which was, which is kind of coincidence and freaky at the same time. Pretty crazy, and I never caught a blackout live on. Here, this is. Fire. Here's the subway station, right? A minute, just to see how it is, what it's like in the subway system. This is one of my, the freakiest captures I've ever done. Yeah, Norma, power outage is other worse. Look at this. This is so dangerous. Why didn't the uh, MTA close this off? Why didn't the like the 
person in the booth like say everyone needs to get out like this is what if someone like walks in the dark and falls onto the tracks or whatever this is wow this is crazy the subway is completely dark Metro car machine. I'm surprised they kept it open like this is freaky freaky as hell and I was so dedicated to still go to Times Square to see Manhattan Henge this day to walk from 42nd Street to I mean to from 72nd Street to 42nd I was gonna take the subway shout out to everyone in NYPD and FDNY and the freaky thing was, you know how Times Square is all lit up with the billboards and stuff? So, when I got here, right? Applebee's has power. Like, half of the billboards were working and then half weren't. Alright, let me skip. Look at this. This is crazy! There's like screens that are black. <laughs> if you ever want to know what Times Square looks like without advertisements, you can see this video. Yes, yeah, Sam, I don't know. Sam, I don't know what happened here, but uh. It wasn't a full blackout, it was like a partial blackout. So like, part of the buildings had power and then part didn't. And uh, even where I was, like, the outage only went up to 71st Street. I was eating on 72nd. Hey, thank you, Rebecca, for the two bucks in honor of good luck. Thank you. City, everyone, and it is without... Look at this giant billboard in front of the Marriott Marquis without power. Marriott Marquis without. I'm and this is. Walk to the left because... One Times Square building where the ball drops, no power. Now we've got the blackout people and Manhattan Henge observers at the same time. This is crazy. I wouldn't know. I didn't really even know how to react in this scenario. I was like, on one hand, I wanted to see Manhattan Henge. I was like, oh, the sun's going to align with the street grid. It's perfect. And then all of a sudden, you have an emergency on the other hand with a power out. So it's like, <laughs> your head's going like two ways. I was like, okay, I want to, um, I want to see Manhattan Henge, but then uh, how am I going to get home afterwards because the subways aren't running with the power. I actually rode a city bike back. Look at this. There's half of the people are wondering, there's no billboards around. And then the other people are like, Manhattan Henge, sunrise, power outage. People are walking all over the place. It's like chaotic. The people are bewildered. That's probably the, the best word for it. This is madness. Yes, this is madness. This is Sparta! I remember that meme. Mark Juarez, 999. Remember I requested Boyle Heights in LA. You made the video so grateful. You're welcome, yeah. I'm glad I could do it. Thank you for showcasing my culture. Sorry, donation came so... <laughs> wow, what? How... How did I know what I was gonna say? Two years ago, I... Oh my gosh. That was a joke. <laughs> Lids, no power. Hard Rock Cafe, no power. This isn't scripted, man. This is... I didn't intend to say that. <laughs> Alright, where's uh, 42nd Street, Manhattan Henge? Okay, 
Okay, green light. This is this is probably one of the most disorganized I can't see it, but the camera can. Manhattan hinges ever because people are like I need to get home there's no power and Manhattan hinge at the same time there's people taking pictures from their cars if you like this video of the partial blackout of Manhattan and ending at Manhattan hinge be sure to give this video a like comment subscribe and I'll catch you all next time see you later insane right yeah Jason uh what's up Jason if you haven't seen uh, Jason Rupp's video on uh, the foot massage that we got, it's right here. One hour foot massage. I was in this video with him. But I call this, um, I call this video the uh, Tag Team Masters because like we started off with like two people in the beginning and then midway through the massage like they swap out other people which is <laughs> kind of strange so we started off with these two people Jason? and then I got this person and then I think Jason got another person oh no it's the same person <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, Jason, you thought you were going to get the pretty lady. Yeah, they they tricked us. They were like, oh, sit down, we'll do this. And we got swapped out. That's so funny. All right. <laughs> yeah, HC, uh, James and Carla also covered the Manhattan Henge. I saw them a little bit, but... I didn't see uh, what they were able to get uh, right here. Hey guys! This is from 14th Street, we by the way. On 14th Street. Oh, this they really get something. Super, super bright. It's gonna be in you know, just a few minutes. It's kind of trees, so I'm just gonna keep on going up. Yeah, there's people Honestly. already running in the middle of the street for it. There we go. Yeah, they really get something. When the traffic comes, you have to get out of the street. Whoa, what happened there? Topaz. Caroline and Myrna. I guess that this is the only section they're able to get right here. It looks hazy. Back in the best views of it. Those three streets are pretty much straight. Happy Memorial Day to you. Wow, there's a lot of uh, sirens going on when they're doing their live stream. Yeah, it was a it was a hazy Manhattan hinge all over from 42nd Street to uh, 14th Street. I'm sure the other major streets were cloudy as well. They could try again tomorrow because uh, one or two days for the Manhattan Henge sunset doesn't really affect it too much. Hey Bart Turd with a uh, 5 Brazilian Real. Hey my idol AK, why don't you use Brave Browser so you can block those ads. I mean, uh, I like Microsoft Edge. It's really quick. Brave Browser, I think you'd have to sign in to block all the ads. So. I wonder who else covered the Manhattan Hench today. Let's see. We go by uh, upload date and we'll see. New York Street. Looks like they covered it from uh, Tudor City. Satisfy your culinary curiosity with the new Chalupas at Wawa. Yeah, I was at Tudor City before. This this was actually a great shot right here. Like, um, a lot of people make the mistake of uh, going to the front here, where all the uh, 
other like photographers are but it's hard to like really stretch your hands or move your camera around uh it's best if you're here to get a really long selfie sticks and go to the back so you get the crowd or you have to get there early but it looks like to the city was packed it always is from manhattan henge because uh this is like the only spot in Manhattan that you can see a major crosstown street and not have to worry about like traffic. The only other place would be like the High Line, but from there you're already past the New York skyline, so you don't want to go there. Oh, uh, Dutch Miles is covering it too, yeah. He did it uh, two hours ago. Oh, it looks like he did it from uh, Long Island City. Yeah, let's see uh, what happened here. You can see the sun moving in. Yeah, Barter, thank you so much for a two Brazilian real. You can block block all the ads for free. Giant, hello. All the way in using the super. Oh, that's so Enjoy. great. From Long Island City, this is a uh, this is one of the best views right here. Oh wait, he's in Greenpoint. Yeah, NYC Walking Show, Forty Second Street was so crazy, and it was kind of hazy too. I think across the river, East River, Greenpoint, Long Island City, they had the best view. You get you see the clouds too. It's amazing, look at this. You know, NYC walking show, I think, uh, I think uh, what you had in 42nd Street was good, but this is probably the view you got because these bottom clouds were what you were seeing. But over here, like uh, on the upper left, there was no clouds. There it goes. One cloud, the horizon just mixed it up. Yeah, the uh, East River had the best view because they saw everything. Amazing. I think that's, um, I think that's all of them, like the major, uh, the major streets that people wanted to cover. Yeah, uh, C5, I guess you could try it on July 11th again. Wow, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, was here. He's the one who coined the uh, phrase Manhattan Hench. Unbelievable. See, this person caught a Manhattan Hench sunrise. This one I tried to get. Find a man who wears underwear that makes his swear with. Thank you, Mickey FC, for the four ninety nine. You're the best in the biz. Appreciate it so much. This time I was prepared in twenty twenty to do Manhattan Henge, and we had good conditions all the way up until here, and there was like so many clouds, but it was a bust. You see, it was like all cloudy and you can't see anything. I still think the best way to see Manhattan Henge is on a bicycle. If you go on one side of 42nd Street when the sunset just starts, you bike really slowly towards the other end of the island and you see the sun like coming right at you. That's it's so nice. Yeah, Safaraz, that's right. 72nd and Broadway is a good spot. Um, Central Park West, I think at 72nd Street, you can get a good uh, shot of Manhattan Henge too. Wonder if anyone uh, got it from 72nd Street. 
This one's uh, nine years ago. Let's see. They got it good here. I think this is from Central Park. Yeah, 72nd Street is really nice. Oh, uh, Safraz, when you're on the Pershing Square Bridge, that's also a good spot. The problem is with that bridge, I've done it before, is that it's still open to car traffic when it happens. So, uh... So you're standing on that bridge, right? And, uh, everyone's, like, trying to go around you. It's really bad, I'll show you. So this is what he's talking about, uh, Safraz. So you're supposed to stand, where's, uh, facing Times Square, okay, here. So this is still an active roadway, so what people do here is they actually walk from Park Avenue down there up this bridge, and meanwhile the traffic's still coming, and they stand all the way over here and back here too. And meanwhile, this car is coming by. It's it's kind of dangerous, and uh, I don't really think it's worth the effort to go up here. I mean, if you come up here, you might as well use the Tudor City overpass. But yeah, this is the view you get from uh, the Pershing Square Bridge. And uh, the Tudor City one, this is the best one. Right here, Tudor City Place. And you see a uh, angle right of 42nd Street. The only uh, issue with Tudor City now is because uh, of this new skyscraper. And this is something that gets in the way of Manhattan Hinge the one Vanderbilt Tower. Before when this was here, uh, wasn't here, the sunset will come right here and you can see more of it. But because the uh, one Vanderbilt Tower is made of completely of like glass and reflective surfaces, it adds like a little bit too much light. So it's actually a hindrance now to uh, go to Tudor City because of this. Oh, Norma, there's a show called Younger that takes place in New York City. They show Manhattan Henge in the show, but couldn't tell what street they're on. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's right. Uh, bagels and walks. Uh, the trees here is a big problem from Tudor City Place, especially if they don't prune them or trim them. I still think the best place to get Manhattan Henge is at Times Square, 7th Avenue and Broadway. It's the most uh, iconic spot and the most people. Uh, Sandra says, when did this event become a thing or when was it discovered? I'm not really too sure. I wonder if there's any information on it. When it was coined and uh, Also inaccurately called the Manhattan Solstice. Oh, here it is. The term Manhattan Henge was coined in 1997 in the Na magazine Natural History by Neil deGrasse Tyson. So yeah, it was a it was a while ago. Valerie saying, uh, "You think they said the next Manhattan Henge was?" June or July 10th and 11th, probably July, huh? You know what's kind of interesting? I uh, stumbled something completely by accident and I think it was in March. I got a sunset in uh, Miami and it kind of looked like the sunset was setting between the skyscrapers of Miami. So 
I wonder if I could find it in my uh, in my iPhone anywhere. Let's see. Yes, I found it. So I stumbled upon this completely by accident when was when I take this picture. March nineteenth. This is Miami Henge. So, uh, you know what? Hmm. I gotta do some math now. So, July 11th to uh, May 30th. Let's calculate the days. Maybe I could see another Miami Henge. Let's see. From May 30th to July 11th. That's uh, 42 days according to uh, the date calculator. So let's see. I got to do uh, add or subtract days from March 19th and add 42 days. It already passed April 30th. Too bad. I could have seen a second Miami Henge, but now I know for the future. But this was pretty close to a uh, Miami Henge, if you ever have one, right here. And uh, if you show this picture to someone, you probably wouldn't even know it's Miami because you see the tall skyscrapers. HC teacher says, uh, take a pic and get it in the newspaper. That will definitely put you on the map for the people down there. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe I have to invent Miami Henge now. Be like March 19th of each year is Miami Henge or whatever. Hung Mao says, awesome shot of Miami Henge. I only got one picture. I didn't think it was anything when I did it. And I was like, wait a second. It could be Miami Henge. Anyway, uh, I want to view a few of uh, my friend Here Be Bar's videos. He wanted me to uh, text him before I do it. So let me message him. I think you might want to join because he told me to react to some of his videos. I didn't uh, see all of them yet, so I saved I saved my reactions for him pretty much. Let's see if he's gonna join in. I don't know. <laughs> You want me to uh, post it on Instagram? Oh, good idea. Let me do that. I need to find that picture now. It's gonna be a, a while. Let's see. Hopefully I could find it. I have so many Instagram pictures. But now I know uh, Recents. I think I'm gonna have to keep scrolling. Now I know uh, when I took that picture, so I gotta scroll back a while until March 19th for Miami Hench. Uh, oh, this is before. I'm getting closer. No, I think I found it. Yep. Okay, I found Miami Hench. I'm going to post it on Instagram right now. While New York City had Manhattan Henge. Two 
today. I don't know if this was the official date of Miami Henge or if it was uh if it's like off by a day or two. It's kind of hard to uh it's kind of hard to tell unless like you're an astronomer that can really calculate these things. I just kind of looked at it and be like, "Oh, that kind of reminds me of Manhattan Henge." So I kind of know it's like in that general zone now around March 19th. That's when Miami Henge happens. Let's see, Miami Henge. Okay, uh, it's on Instagram now, it's posting. While well, NYC had Manhattan Henge today, I caught something similar on March 19th with the sunset between the buildings. I call it Miami Henge. Excellent. Lena wants to be the first to like it. You can. All right. Okay, let's... Uh, I didn't see... I didn't see uh, the Brooklyn pizza video. I didn't see most of it. And I also didn't see the uh, hot dog stands video that he uploaded. So let's... Uh, see if I agree with some of these Brooklyn pizza places. Yeah, Owen, that's true. It may not calculate the same number of days in between as New York. Yeah, I don't really know how these, uh, you know, bodies in the solar system move around. I mean, it could be different from New York than, uh, than Miami, too. So uh, I'm reacting to uh, here be bars video. Perfect. Ultimate New York Pizza. Today we're going on the ultimate New York Pizza crawl. We'll be visiting five South Brooklyn slice shops. New York Pizza. Can't charge. go wrong. We're going to be led by a born and bred Brooklynite who eats pizza for a living. Hope you brought your That's uh, Pizza Reviews on the go. Antonio doesn't get much Luigi's Pizza. I've tried this place uh, right before I left for Florida. This place is awesome. Much better than Luigi's. Normus is am I ready to be an uncle? I don't think so. If you were to look up Brooklyn Pizzeria, it would look just like this. This is awesome, awesome pizza. It looks just as I remembered it. I love making pizza. I never had to work a day in my life because this is the Geo, the owner, is awesome. And I think pizza is Brooklyn. Italian tomatoes, rich Italian tomatoes. I love using my grande. I float it on. Look at this guy. He's a master. Makes for a beautiful, incredible pie. Some olive oil, the magic of pizza. Good olive oil. 50 years of doing this. There isn't a pie that comes out of this oven that I don't look at and say, wow, I want a slice of that pie. Look at this reward we get. If the owner is that involved with his business and making pizza, you know the pizza is going to be good already. God, look at this. <laughs> you know, the last time I was here, I kid you not, a guy walked in and he said, I'm bringing this box to Buffalo, New York, which is like eight hours away from my daughter. Yeah, Luigi's. Uh, <laughs> wow. 
That's crazy. Bringing the pizza all the way to Buffalo, New York. Yeah, Jerry. Uh, fifty years of making pizza. You better know the man knows how to make his pizza. Yeah, Ben. Uh, saying good point. Always better with the owner and manager there for sure. And uh, not only that, this pizzeria was also featured in uh, One Bite Pizza reviews. He gave it like a nine point three or something, like one of the highest scores ever. Has become internationally known. This pizza is made the old school way with love. They don't cut corners here. The owner is there all the time, and that's special. That counts for something, guys. Gio is saying how he inspects like every single pie that goes in that oven. He is a man who is serious. And look, I know in your review video you said it almost no flop here. It's the flop. A sturdy, sturdy slice. And you know what I look for in a pizza is. A Wait, is a. Uh... Part of that pizza broken. I just noticed something right here. What happened here? I think uh, maybe they were trying to separate the slices and that kind of fell apart. It all tastes good in the end. A nice balanced crust. You want you want it crunchy, but you don't want it like a breadstick. Oh, let's take a bite. Oh, I could tell it's good already. I just love the flavor of this pizza, man. The, the yeah. cheese, the tomatoes, everything oh, the is sauce, fresh, yeah. really thin as well. Yeah, this like, is not your standard plain slice right. in New York. It's unique. Absolutely. Thinner than the typical New York slice. It's really thin. It's a lot thinner than Joe's in my opinion. Unlike other places. Uh, it's not really that thing. I would say that's average New York City pizza, the, the uh, thinness. Everybody raves about New Haven pizza, folks. New York. I haven't even tried New Haven pizza. What does New Haven pizza look like? New Haven pizza? Let's see. This is New Haven pizza? Where's the tomato sauce? Is it like a sauceless? Let's look at some other New Haven pizza. That it looks unique. I don't know. I kind of feel like it looks like New Haven pizza is more doughy and less tomato sauce and more crunchy. Our oh, Sherry says uh, New Haven pizza is very thin and. What you're looking at, I believe, is a white clam pizza, huh? Yeah, I could tell it's thin. Interesting. I might have to try it. Along with Cuban pizza, which I haven't tried in Miami either. This is where it's at. You're not going to find tourists here. The people that are walking in here, a lot of them live in the neighborhood. These are local places. That's what I love best about doing a South Brooklyn tour. This is the heart of Bensonhurst. All right, so uh, that was Luigi's Pizza. I want to show you uh, my review. This place is amazing. Got to watch a whole 15 second ad. Sherry says New Haven pizza is very good. You recommend Peppies or Sal? I have to try it if I go up there. Hey, I'm gonna try Luigi's Pizza in Brooklyn between since 1973 Street on Fifth Avenue in Park Slope, Brooklyn. This uh, pizzeria got some pretty high reviews, and I school sports, and they got very high reviews. I've never tried this place before. And that I've is what you call a amazing, great New York City slice. Let's give it a try. All right, here we go, Luigi's Pizzeria. It must have been so cold when I uh, went here. Very crisp, as you can see. It's oil. Let's try this. You could hear the crunch when I bite into it. This is an 
amazing slice. The cheese, the mayo, the crust, the crust especially is the best part. Safraz, uh, have I ever been to New Park Pizza in Howard Beach? Yes, I've been to that place. I like it, but the only issue with it, I feel like it's too thin. I don't really like uh, thin, thin pizza. I kind of want pizza to fill me up a little bit. But it was very good pizza, though. Really, really nice flavor. The reason why this got high marks, and it's also getting high marks for me, too. Let's get another bite. Crunch. That's how you know it's good. You hear that crunch. Oh, yeah. mm. This place is good. Definitely one of the better pizzerias I've tried. Maybe even the best. Mmm. Luigi's Pizza. Amazing. Mmm. Alright, let's see what other pizzerias that uh, are featured in here. Where I grew up, man, it was just everything is a, all right. They're going to Bensonhurst now. Have Amazon back then, we didn't need it. You want to buy sneakers, you want to buy clothes, whatever it was. There's, there's a place out on a Bensonhurst street. It's changing, huh? We didn't have Chipotle back then. Da Vinci Pizza might have passed by. It's, it sounds familiar. Man. This looks like a good pizza too. It's got a lot of oil. Antonio's in the zone right here because sixty-five fourteen Eighteenth Avenue. I've been up and down Eighteenth Avenue, but I don't think I've noticed this place. Let's see where it is. Sixty-five fourteen Eighteenth. Avenue in Brooklyn. Oh, it's right by the uh, N train. Wow, look at this. This place is like so unpretentious. It's smack dab in the middle. You could easily like walk past it. It's a Vinci Pizzeria. I can already tell this place is good just from the storefront. It's like an old script. You, you grew up at this spot. I feel like I'm home. Oh, the sight of that Sicilian. That looks so good, man. I want to try that na uh, next time in New York. That Sicilian's like so puffy and it looks like it's uh has a lot of substance to it too. Don Tito says, have I tried uh, Champion Pizza? I've never tried it before. You gotta have the right knuckles to make the pizza. If you don't got the right knuckles, you can't make the pizza. No, I'm just admiring this right here. You also gotta have the right accent to make the pizza too. If there's a guy having the New York accents in there, you know it's good pizza. Oh, that was smooth. Look at the way they put it in the oven. All right, bon appetit. Thank you so much. Bon appetit, guys. All right. Bon appetit. I see the way you're looking at this place. I see your eyes, like the nostalgia. Just, I'm looking like, at this place too through the screen. Like I want to eat it right now. You're, you're right back to where you started so many years ago. <laughs> I've had more birthday parties here. Oh, they do birthdays too. Wow. Place. You know, we move around <laughs> a lot nowadays. People go from different uh, apartments every few years, and so. These places, it's the same four walls, and so you walk in and it's like, oh, home. So much cheese on top, and you were saying this That's is like good, a man. square slice, not like L and B, which is the upside down with the tomato on. Wow, they they cut that Sicilian in a triangle. Usually they cut it like uh, the other way, like like this way, where you see my cursor, like this way, half this way. But they cut it this way, which is interesting. I guess you could ask it like that, but I've never really seen Sicilian cut that way before. On top, we got the yeah. cheese just staring right at you there. Man. Yeah, this is the classic quintessential yeah. New York Sicilian style. Like I said, we call it the square. 
Hey, we have the man himself here. Good pizza. I could tell. This is amazing. That Sicilian slice, it probably is the best in Brooklyn. That's a good way to put it, John. Pillowy. Kind of melts in your mouth. I've never had a slice quite like this one before. Ooh. Most square pizza in New York City is very dense and, and spongy. It's so rare to find it like this. Light, pillowy, crispy, crispy bottom. It ends with a massive crunch. If people don't realize wow. it, you run a I gotta try this place for next all time. You do is review New York Pillowy. Pizza. Pillowy. Subscribe to the channel right now if you want the lowdown on all things New York pizza. Trust me. I do exclusively pizza for a living. This guy's eating me. This under guy the table rules. Today. He's commented on my videos before. All day thus far. He, he knows it's a pizza. Tough job, but somebody's got to do it, okay? Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And if you're somebody that watches uh, John, channel, I mean, uh, John Loresh saying, "Where is this pizza place? It's uh." Over here, 65, 18, no, 65, 15, 18th Avenue in Brooklyn. Between 65th Street and 66th in Bensonhurst, right here. That's where you're looking at. And you could easily pass this pizzeria because it's right here. It's, there's a big tree in front of it. Let's see what else is here. Fast forward his sponsorship. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Skillshare's an on of Skillshare's. Hey, thanks a lot. Oh, this place is so iconic. Ellen B. Spumoni Gardens. When you talk to someone who's been in Brooklyn for a long time, they're always going to mention this place. It's right by Coney Island and People always say like, oh, we'll just go to L&B before we go to the beach or like uh, we'll just have go there to hang out. But this is like the well-known spot in Brooklyn for pizzeria, L&B. L&B Spumoni Gardens established 1939, New York City history. Right it's here. even longer uh, than uh, like Luigi's. LNB. You feel like, like you're at a block party. You guys, look at this. It's like That's what I said. Like, it's here. you so just Brooklyn go there to hang Brooklyn out, block party. Enjoying themselves and, and this is so unique for a... Uh, I've been here before. This is so unique for, uh, for a pizzeria, too, to have all these tables outside. But I'll show you what I mean. L&B Spumoni Gardens, right near Coney Island. 86th Street. Right here. This is where it is. And you can just hop off the train right here. 86th Street or Avenue U, walk over there, get a pie, and then you head to the beach right here. This is like the spot if you want pizza to bring to the beach. Yeah, uh, John, this is a great spot. And uh, not only that, but their gelato, I've had it before. It's so good. I think they make it themselves. Or I had a great time. When it comes to the Sicilian, some people prefer the corner. Some people prefer. The They're side known for the Sicilian some slice. They don't want any crust. They want. They put the tomato sauce on the top and then the cheese second, which is which is interesting. Corner slice, please. Can I do a uh, middle? Looks good. I was fast. I Ten seconds, Antonio. I think it's important for corner slice and middle. What do you LED prefer? I don't really have a preference. Maybe slice. corner because it's easier to hold. And everybody loves it because you're getting a lot of sauce. There's two cheeses on it. More flavor for it. There's two cheeses on this. I didn't know that. I love the spongy crust and the tomato sauce. Like the flavor just jumps right it, out. It reminds me of the last sweet. time I had Very it. Unique for New York Spongy, City. good, lots of sauce. Too often. There's nothing like having an upside down Sicilian at the place that pioneered this style. The sauce is the standout when you come that's that's what I was gonna say. The sauce really makes the Sicilian. This was my uncle's favorite spot. These places become a part of you, become part of your your life in a, in a way that you'd never imagined. Huge groups are here. A lot of families have brought their kids. And yeah, like I love it's the spot to come. Spots. Everybody knows L and V. They have a space to hang out. These tables. For L and in one sitting. Guys, look at me. I Five slices is nothing. <laughs> I can do five slices, but it's gonna knock oh, me out gosh. today. That's gonna be a really long nap after. I think a mom and a, and a grandma. These days, 
these days i'm trying to cut down on my pizza intake i think like two slices is enough for me <laughs> eating pizza in the front seat of their car like doesn't get much more brooklyn than that yeah that's I mean, right uh terry lenny's pizza on uh 86th street that's the place to be too i've had it from there it's good we want to show you something that you probably haven't heard of before lucia pizza avenue lucia pizza i've never heard of this place before 2201 avenue x i haven't even been to this part of brooklyn too much wow yeah there's no way i would really explore this part of brooklyn because uh it's kind of like in an area where the subway doesn't really serve too well because if you look at it like you have this subway station here neck road and then you have sheep's head bay and in between them you have uh this pizzeria so yeah there's a reason why i never even heard of this place oh it's new open less than a year ago i'm gonna have to check this out too Let's see, what does it look like? Looks like it's on 22nd rather than Avenue X, but... Uh, we got Photobond by the van here, right on the corner. Looks good, huh? Wow. Wow, Mark Juarez with a uh, Super Chat, 1999. Thank you. Last time I bring up B.H. the Chicano Veterans Memorial on the Chavez Lorena will be renamed Angelinos. Oh, this is about Boyle Heights in uh, Los Angeles. It will be renamed Angelinos Opposed Racist Actions by L.A. City Council. Gentrification is now the future. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mark Juarez, for the super chat. Appreciate it. I have to try this place, Lucia. Avenue X, you know, what's on Avenue X? It's gotta be dirty in like the best possible way, right? Pretty damn good food in the neighborhood of Sweet Side Bay. Exactly. That's a good, that's a good show. What could be on Avenue X? It's, it really sounds like a mysterious area if you think about it. Ooh, Avenue X. What could be here? The X-Men, X-rated stuff. But good pizza, I guess. Uh, Gregory, I have not tried Cafecito in Miami. Maybe I'll try it uh, someday. Where is it? Cafecito, Miami. Uh, looks like it's in Coral Gables. No, there's a beverage dis distributor. This one? Northeast First Avenue? I might have to try it, huh? So how long have you guys been here? Four months. Okay. So I've been here for four months, but my mother and my father had a place for like Wow, well, only four years. months yeah. ago they it was opened. Called Papa Leone. Stopped in 2017. And then in the pandemic, I came back, started experimenting in mom and dad's backyard. Fresh bays along wood the fire pizza. Fire. Mostly wood fire stuff. That's but good. It was really light and fun. It's not oh, it's called Cafecito. Okay. I mean, there's hundreds of pizza places in New York City. Right. How do you stand out as a new place? I think it's also about the lineage, respectfully, going back to like what my mother and my father did for so many years. Yeah. Always room for improvement, constantly learning new tricks as we go along. These guys are so good at what they do, just doing the dough. Was that a little ode to DeFaro with the olive oil on top? Yeah. Move I mean, this mic out of the way so you don't see it. Nobody was putting basil on pizza before him. I look for this stuff. Just looking at... Yeah, Defara Pizza. I wonder if it's going to be in this video, but they're like really known to be like the best place in Brooklyn. Or so they say. I uh, have my thoughts about Defara, but 
I've went back there like a few times and uh, I didn't really think the pizza was uh, as good as it could be. It was great, but it could have been better. This, we know this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. It takes time. Dress this pizza up and, and he doesn't have to put all the grated cheese on there and, and, and that beautiful olive oil. He doesn't have to do that. In New York, you can make bad pizza and get away with it. Have that pizza pop looks pop like a 10 out of 10, pop. man. Crunchy from the first bite. You told me to look for that as soon as we got here. I'm loving the vodka flavor. It's just right. And yes, vodka the flavor. First bite. I want that. What? First bite. And this pie delivers. Maybe Did I hear that right? Of New York pizza right now. First bite. And this pie delivers. Just right. Crunchy from the first bite. You told me to look for that as soon as we got here. I'm loving the vodka flavor. It's oh, it's. Vodka flavor on a plain slice? What? This is interesting. Oh. It's a vodka sauce flavor. I, this is interesting now. I'm, I'm uh, very curious. Just right. I gotta yes, try this. Look for that crispy first bite. I want that crispy first bite. And this pie delivers. Maybe we're seeing the evolution of New York pizza right now because we have shown classic spots which are gonna be here. I hope forever. That's that new spots like that's a here, big doing twist on stuff, doing it a little bit different on but pizza. Still staying true to the roots. Pizza is definitely evolving, not just in New York City but all over the world. People are taking more time to ferment their doughs. The crust looks almost wood fired. I have to say, like, this tastes healthy to me as well. Good point, John. It makes it more digestible as well. Yeah. When you take hmm. time to ferment the dough. I haven't been this impressed by a new spot in a really long time. Do it. You got a pizza dance? This is the pizza that makes me dance. <laughs> this sucks. Oh, we got Ben. Not in Queens. So I'd be going here every day. For a second, I thought Ben actually like, hated it. it. Scared me. Got you. You know what they say? That's the. Yeah, he does deserve more subs uh, here be bar, but I think he's over here. You put him in the video description, this guy. Uh, right here. Pizza reviews on the go. This is his channel. If you want to see uh, more pizza reviews, I just linked it in uh, the live chat. So go and subscribe to this guy. He uh, puts up pizza reviews almost every week new spots, new places, so he doesn't only just feature uh, pizza either, he's got Peter Luger looks like he's got a mozzarella sandwich as well Skinny guys can really pack it in. You would think I'd be finishing every crumb, but I gotta watch myself. <laughs> playing the offense, playing defense. The defense wins championships. <laughs> <laughs> offense gets the glory. All right, what's the last spot? Carroll Gardens, such a beautiful neighborhood. We've got some oh. business at Baby Luke's, which is Baby Luke's, 387 Court Street. You know, Carroll Gardens is a neighborhood in Brooklyn that kind of gets overlooked. And doesn't really get the um, uh, attention that it deserves like a Park Slope or downtown Brooklyn or even Bensonhurst but I have to try the food sometime let's see three or is it 387 Court Street Yeah, Court Street is really known as the uh, street in Carroll Gardens where like all the restaurants and um, places to eat. You're not really going to find tours here in Carroll Gardens. They're going to go to like the Coney Islands. They're going to go to uh, Fifth Avenue, Greenwich Village, but Carroll Gardens. Wait, where is this place? Oh, this is 389 Court Street. It might be over here somewhere. This street view is from May 2021, so it may, might be a new spot too. 
is the slice shop version of Lucali, one of the most famous pizza shops, not just in Brooklyn, not just in New York, but in the entire world. In the world, world class pizza, absolutely. Lucali, one of my favorite pizzas. Baby Loops. Oh, it has a lineage from Lucali's. Lucali's is a legendary spot in Brooklyn. So vastly different than the other Sicilians we had yeah. earlier, right? That's what I love about today's video is that every spot has had a different flair to it. Every single one. To be a really good cheap date spot, they have pre-made Negroni. Good cheap date Negroni. spot. Oof. Negroni and pizza. Who knew? Really, I'm impressed with the looks of this pizza. The last time I was here, I think I got. I think uh, if you really want to be a uh, step up your pizza game, you got to put fresh basil on your pizza. That's uh, one of the requirements. <laughs> Not a bad slice. Yeah. This is looking really, really aesthetically pleasing. On. All right, I'm gonna say that this pizza looks great. Um, it may not be like saucy like uh, L and B Spumoni Gardens, but. This one has the crunch to it. It looks like it has a good amount of cheese. The basil's there. It's a really hefty slice. All levels. It's got kind of a little hipster element to this place. I mean, they're serving yeah, cocktails. Yeah, hipster, you know, that's what I today that was really would describe the vibe. Upside down slice. And more traditional. This is more yeah. definitely on the artisanal side. Just look at those air pockets. Look at that, look at that aeration. It's just so light. There's a lot of uh, a lot of spices, herbs. I'm tasting a lot of flavor on this. Like very different than the other pizza we've had today so far. The flavor profile completely different. I agree, and that char and has a nice smoky element to it. And it oh, it's so well char too. The natural sweetness of a tomato sauce. I just love that. I just love that. I love this scene right here, just staring at the beautiful brownstones of Carroll Gardens. This is totally. A vibe. Yeah, if I had to pick one place in the in the city to live in, this neighborhood makes top three at least. Guys, before I sit down, I just gotta go one notch less on the belt. We had quite <laughs> a few slices of pizza today. Oh my so gosh! Just do what I do and not have a belt. Period. That helps a little that, bit. That that works. Yeah. When you hang out just have loose you clothing. Pizza, crawl, leave your belt at home. You know, Queens doesn't get enough love for pizza fanatics. Yeah, John, this York. video, you, know, you right probably here, gained a few pounds from it. Five amazing pizza places in Queens. You'd be crazy not to visit these spots. Check out this video right here. Yeah, uh, the Queens list is very good, too. I haven't been to all of them, but I like to try the Queens list as well. But uh, something I didn't see in its entirety is... Uh, the eating at the best reviewed hot dog stands. I only saw like the first part of it, but this is completely going to be uh, a raw reaction, just like the uh, the Brooklyn pizza one. Yeah, Norma, you got to bring your stretchy pants if you're going to do these uh, food reviews. And uh, I'm really feeling bad for you in Vegas right now because I'm seeing a lot of food reviews from you. So just... Uh, <laughs> Just make sure you watch those foods that you get because you may have to get some bigger clothes too. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be okay. Alright, let's see hot dogs. You know, one thing about hot dogs in New York is that it's kind of like a dying food because um, nowadays you don't really see too many hot dog carts. You see more halal carts and they'll serve hot dogs as well but this it's rare that you'll find people specializing in just hot dogs so i'm really curious uh how this video is going to play out and where these best hot dog carts are today we're eating one of america's favorite street foods the hot dog we'll be and uh good timing on this john because uh it was memorial day weekend and hot dogs are like one of the number one foods from Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if you thought of it that way, but it was a great timing on your part. We'll be visiting three of the best rated hot dog stands in New York City. Hope you brought your appetites. Ooh, Billy's the sauerkraut. Billy's Hot Dogs. Central Park West. Look, look at the address. It just says Central Park West. Unnamed hot dog. 
Norman says you just join a second gym to help keep up the food weight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's hard to keep those pounds off when uh, doing food reviews. That's why I try not to do food reviews too often. It's kind of like every once in a while I do one, but the other times I'm like eating healthy and trying not to uh, eat myself and gain pounds. Let's see where Billy's hot dog cart is. It's a unknown address, Central Park West. This is really intriguing. 100 five-star reviews on Google. Best hot dog I've wow. ever had cooked just right. All the reviews are totally true. Good hot dogs, but especially such a friendly owner. This spot has no social media, no phone number, just a schedule off of Google. I don't even know if this is going to be here. Come on. <laughs> These are the best places, really. It's kind of like it's the, hard, the things that are hard to find, the holes in the wall. Billy's hot dog cart might not be here, so it's kind of like a surprise. Best food in the world, right? These are the kinds of stuff that uh, I crave sometimes. All right, so simple. That's it. I thought it would be bigger. It's just a small little hot dog cart. I thought it would be like twice the size, at least. <laughs> What do you think? Is this going to be a good hot dog? It's so New York. We heard you were the best hot dog cart in New York. You seem very popular around here. I'm, I'm seeing the line. <laughs> Only a rumor. Oh, sauerkraut, mustard. Okay. I have so many customers, I can't even handle it. The thing you can do is just put over here. Help we want and no experience necessary. Okay. Yeah, he may need help. It looks like he needs a bigger hot dog cart. Central Park. Does it get much more New York than that? So excited. That was my dream when I came here. Was it? It's one of those things as a, as a tourist you want to do because you see it in the movies. This looks fantastic. Look at this thing. It looks good. Look at those onions. Look at the glaze. The bun looks good too. Don't really see too much of the hot dog itself because it's covered in the uh, the sauerkraut, but I guess I have to uh, depend on their reaction to it to see how it is. This is the OG street food of New York City, if you think about it. Before halal, before anything else, hot dog. Ready? Right, let's, go. let's try it. I didn't hear a crunch. Mm. I think of a hot dog experience in New York City. I'm thinking of this right here. Like nice snap to the dog when you take that bite. Onions it probably was add there, add but the, the, the mic was too far away. This is what you go for. This is what all the reviews said to get is the onion sauce. What, what about you? How are you feeling? Simple, but perfect. You don't need much. You like the bone, great sausage, and the fantastic onion Oh, sauce. that's good. Wow. I almost never see long lines. Oh, they call it onion sauce? In New York. I said it was sauerkraut. Really running to a car. Somebody just pulled up, ordered a hot dog. That's how much of like a neighborhood celebrity this guy is. I saw people running over real Wow, what everyone. a guy. Has a chat with the guy. They even had like, like holiday cars from families. It's probably around the area. That's so cool. Having that neighborhood guy, be it a hot dog, be it coffee, be it anything, where like he knows wow. what you want. And he's got absolutely no attention. He could be the first ones to ever film him, as far as I know. This is a milestone moment. Our baby boy who's not born yet just had his first New York City hot dog. Anybody who doesn't know, here be Bar and Adriana, they're expecting. So uh, I'm really, really happy for them. And uh, I'm happy that little bo uh, baby Bar there had his first hot dog. So congrats. And uh, can't be any more happy for them. Is he kicking? No, but he will soon. He'll be happy. <laughs> Only locals know about it, I think. I think if a tourist walks by, I think he'll be kicking thing, soon. One more vendor. Thank you. It was. It was. That was honestly one of the best hot dogs I've had in my entire life. It was so good. Thank you. Keep up Thank the good you. work. I did not know this was a thing in New York. I had no clue that you could charge your Tesla here. What? Learn something new every day. I didn't know that. I am a business hotel. I eat, sleep, and breathe efficiency. I'm looking for someone. Charge your test. I did not know. What is this thing? It looks like it's taking up a lot more sidewalk spot uh, space than it needs to. Like, 
there's a wire here and it connects to another wire down here and where do you actually plug into this? Oh, this was a thing in New York. I had no clue that you could charge your Tesla here. Learn something new every day. Wow. What Santa the? Salsa. Where is this place? Venezuelan Looks like a uh, Bushwick. We'll call them hipster hot. Hey, wait a second. Hipster hot dogs, huh? Yeah, this is totally Bushwick. I mean, you see the like, graffiti on the on the uh, walls there and the murals. This is Bushwick. Has to be. Dogs. This is the hipster capital of Brooklyn, Bushwick. Also the street. Yeah, how did I know? Bushwick, hipster central. Our capital, vintage stores, a lot of good food, a lot of good bars. Yummy Venezuelan hot dogs, hip atmosphere, friendly staff. Oh, that I looks love good. Santa Salsa almost as much as myself. Okay, let's see. Santa Salsa. Santa Salsa started as a push cart in Rockaway Beach. Here, it started as a push cart. Enjoy huh? the artwork on the walls. Wow, even this spot has all the artwork. You can find almost in every corner hot dog carts where they have this wow. super crazy version of hot dogs and burgers and, and, and sandwiches. Bacon. Talk about Bacon. experimental hot dogs and uh, creative and hot dogs. Crushed potato chips. Whoa. Potato chips on a hot dog? Really? <laughs> hey, I'm sure it tastes good. I just think it's shocking. Monster. So special sauce, the Santa Salsa. Whoa. How many more stuff are you going to put on it? Let's put the kitchen sink on it too. Oh my gosh. This looks like a hot dog. It's about to go to some kind of a warch. What? That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner in one meal. <laughs> Girl, we're presenting it for the judges. That's not even a hot dog anymore. That's... That's a, I don't know. That's a... I don't know. Gosh. Can you even call it a, a sandwich? I mean, what is a sandwich really? It's a, it's a piece of meat between two buns. Yeah, I guess I guess you can call it a sandwich now, like a very loaded sandwich. Best hot dog in New York City by the Village Voice, and it has like every ingredient. Whoa! Santa salsa, how special? Eight bucks. For all the ingredients they put on it, I think it's worth eight bucks. Holy moly. Kosher beef frank, bacon, fried cheese, avocado, onions, cabbage, chips, ketchup, mustard, and Santa salsa, and guasacara. Oh my gosh. Mark Juarez grew up street vending with my parents in Hollywood. These guys are legends. Love to see a success story. Most of us never get a restaurant. Yeah, thanks for the uh, super chat. That's true. To really see these success stories that they start as a push card and work their way up. Now they have a storefront. Amazing. You could possibly imagine on this, like an American hot dog. Wow. Steroids. This is a kosher beef frank. Onions, cabbage, chips, cheese, ketchup, mustard, Santa salsa. Ooh. I don't even know where to begin with this. Salad where do you meat. begin? This, this looks fantastic. I'm gonna take a big bite. Mm. <laughs> it's really hard to describe how many flavors I just experienced in one bite. But I what do you them. taste I love about in here? Hot dogs are the chips potato chips cut up inside of them it takes me back to my time in puerto rico i mean he said they stay true to the roots of venezuela and the that's true uh here in little havana in miami there's a place i forgot the name of it, it it's called like frijoles there uh let me see if i can find it hey peter laycock with 50 pounds thanks for joining in Good morning, everyone in the chat from Bonnie, Scotland. Appreciate it. Really, really nice for you to come in. We're uh, reacting to some videos here. Let's see. 
Where is this place? Maybe I could find it. Uh, I don't think it was this far down. This place right here. El Rey de las Fritas. I'm not sure if I made a review on this on my uh, second channel, Action Kit Extra, but they uh, cut up their their uh, fries and they put it on the Cuban sandwich like this. That kind of reminds me of potato chips on the uh, on the hot dog. They call it the fritas. But this totally reminds me of the potato chips. These hot dogs, this is just taking something simple, bringing it to South America and going absolutely wild with it. And I'm just such a huge It fan. is wild. It's so interesting. You Whoa, what is dog. that? What is that? I'm just such a huge fan of it. This is so I don't see a hot dog anymore. I see black beans with uh, guacamole sauce. What? Wow. What a crazy place. I mean, I can tell that the hot dogs are really good, but like, this isn't even a hot dog anymore. It's a, I don't know. It's a really super loaded sandwich for everything. Interesting. You always ask us about vegan food. You have great options. That's vegan? Oh yeah, that's right. I don't see a, a hot dog Frank in there. So it's uh, black beans and looks like their version of guacamole sauce and uh, whatever they put in there that's not made from animal products. Wow, it looks good. Here, just look at this one. It looks delicious. It's a sweet plantain inside. Oh, beans, it's plantains. Kind of Venezuelan green sauce. It looks delicious, guys. Whoa. Oh my god, this is so good. These held up fantastic. Like I thought this would be a complete mess, but that somehow, is the way so created, good. They actually hold up. That's a Latin. That's amazing, cause uh, a, a lot of times when like you make you order these like super sized burgers and stuff, like you can't even put your mouth over it. Like stuff is falling off of it when you eat it or you cut it up. So it's kind of hard to like balance like really stuffing a uh, food item and uh, having stuff like not fall off out of it at the same time so sweet plantain and hot dogs is a great idea for a vegan hot dog this is delicious that sounds like a good idea that doesn't have like non-vegan options probably at all you know so and you have a lot of vegans in bushwick too right that's yeah. like smart move well maybe it's like almost yeah. 50 50 Vegan people coming Look at this menu, it's like, like so creative. You know, not just like, oh, we have one, wow. two items for you, you know, it's like, oh, no, like, the menu is, is creative. They're really smart oh, doing oh. this. My goodness, this is so gorgeous. Whoa! And... That looks like tofu on top of the uh, hot dog, but I know it's the fried cheese. Wow. Oof, do I just... Mmm. Oh, look at this guy. Mm -mm -mm. Goes right in. So savory, it almost tastes like a high quality taco. It's almost illegal that this should be a hot dog. It's like. <laughs> that comment just cracks me up. That's, that's what I said. I said it's not even a hot dog anymore. <laughs> it's, it is, should be illegal. They shouldn't call it a hot dog. They should call it. Uh, I don't know. It's like sandwich now, not hot dog. This is more than just a hot dog. <laughs> this is good. This is really good. What's something unique? I don't know if it gets much more unique for a hot dog in New York City than this. I love meat, guys. I love my meat. I love my beef. I this has to be the wildest hot dog pork. place in the entire city. So much. And she's pregnant. She knows all about cravings. So trust, trust her opinion. <laughs> so Ben, you just bought a $15 used suitcase from the thrift store next door. Samsonite. I was gonna go to Chinatown to grab one of these, but 15 is better than 50. How do we stuff Reese's peanut That's butter, true. pretzels, 15 caramel, better than 50. And chocolate? All right, Park Slope. Dog Day Afternoon, named after an Al Pacino bank heist. Dog Day Afternoon. 
right on this block. Chicago style hot dog. Oh, Chicago style now. Okay. Now we're bringing the Chicago style hot dog into uh, New York City. You know, um, here's another thing that I want to interlude in before I resume this video. Let's see if I can find this. I think Chicago style hot dogs really started the movement to uh, alternative hot dogs. And one of them that I got was the Coney Dogs in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is a, uh, it kind of derives from the Chicago Dogs. The, the Chicago Dog is kind of like they put everything on it. But this is uh, Fort Wayne's interpretation of the hot dog where they put uh onions on it and mustard and I forget what else, what other ingredients um, this is like a year ago I made this video hey everyone I'm in Fort Wayne Indiana and I'm going to try Fort Wayne's famous Coney Island hot dogs yeah and uh, they're trying to uh, I guess be trendy by calling a place uh, Coney Island or Coney dogs so <laughs> that's that's how they uh, try to like boost up their image a little bit. I even saw this in Fort Wayne. There was like a Brooklyn law firm in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and now they're trying to call their uh, their food item after a place in New York City, the Coney Dog. This was a suggestion from a random local in the area who passed by, and I'm going to show you what it's like. But this place is like iconic. There's like retro stuff on the walls. They had a plaque there. Hello, wow. Coney Island famous. And they even have a big thing in the front. <laughs> They're reviewing the Coney this. dog. It smells like home already. I'm from New York. So, Coney dog, chili soup, hamburger. So yeah, this is the chili, Coney onions, dog. Chili, onions, and mustard on this hot dog on the steam bun. Chili, onions, really and mustard delicious. on a hot Let's dog. Let's give it a try. All right. Mm. What did I think of it? It's really good. This is really unique. It's got the onions in there and the chili. So tasty. I'm really surprised. Like, it's very refreshing. It's not too heavy on the salt. I like it a lot. Ooh. John's saying this is where you find me in Fort Wayne if you ever went there. Yeah, it's kind of like the biggest thing in Fort Wayne, the, the Coney Dogs place. <laughs> I mean, um. Yeah, so this is Fort Wayne's interpretation of a. Uh, Chicago hot dog, but let's see what this place entails. In New York City, hands down the best Chicago dogs in NYC. Mm. Ashamed to say, I'd never tried a Chicago hot dog until I came here. I've tried a Chicago dog in Chicago before. All right, really I'm good. 4.9, let's go. I right, love the vintage vibes in here. It feels like I'm going somewhere after school if I was from Chicago. Wait. What? Low expectations, high hopes. Oops. I have high hopes. Oh, it was from Chicago. That's not Pac Man they're playing. Why is the arcade machine labeled Pac Man and they're playing a fighting game? <laughs> I have high hopes. Low expectations, high hopes. All right, Jacob, let's but see. I was selling pop up hot dogs. If it's an authentic Brooklyn, Chicago hot dog. Like with a hot dog hawker and just like make hot dogs for like people in like bars like late at night and everything like that. But this was always just a dream of mine to have a brick and mortar, have like a place that reminds me. This place me looks of good, kid, authentic. Like, you know, video game, eventually comics, records. Oh, they put the, the, the fighting game thing on the arcade machine itself. I love hot dogs. Anywhere I go, I'll always eat a hot dog. I even eat a water dog, you know, in uh, Penn Station. Everything water is dog? Right. Like What's a water dog? Neon relish, and that's very specific for the Chicago dog. And all the hot dogs are steamed instead of grilled. So that way, oh. they don't lose any of the juice, they don't dry out, they don't get too salty, and they plump when you cook them. And then it goes the neon relish. And pretty much what happens after that is you put neon relish. In there too. Then you have a fresh pickle, dill pickle. We 
we've used a little bit of a, a half sours, so that has a little bit more freshness to it, a little bit more. Crunch. Oh, he means and dirty water dog. Add some celery salt. How spicy are those peppers? They're not too spicy at all. They're going to be like the best way to describe them are like small pickled jalapenos, and this is a Chicago dog. I think a good rule of thumb is you should always walk. Mmm, that looks good. It reminds me of the uh, the Chicago hot dog I had. I forgot the name of it, but it was like in the downtown area. They had a sign in front said like uh, voted like best Chicago hot dogs or something, and it was really good. Watch your hot dog being made. You that looks fresher than the one I had. Like good old Vienna beef from the Chicago. pickle looks fresher. I said that they made looks like the bun has like poppy Everyone seeds on it. Yeah. Chicago. Wow. Yep. Chicago hot dog, I know, because as soon as you take the bite of it, the water starts dripping out. Look, watch it again. Look at that water coming down. Mm. I'll even slow it down. Got that ship them in from Chicago. They don't even want to they make the poppy seed buns here. Like they don't even want to ship them in from Chicago. Alright, let's slow it down. Cause this is worth watching. It's all these fine details. Watch this water come out. That's how you know it's a good Chicago hot dog. All the stuff starts coming out. Oh, look at that. Great. <laughs> mm. It's it's good. That big snap, and they keep the flavor inside, and I definitely noticed that. Of all the hot dogs we had today, I have to say that this actual hot dog had the most flavor to it. In Chicago, you don't have hot dog. Like, really? This has more flavor than the Bushwick one, but the Bushwick one puts like more stuff on it. Wow, that's that's uh, eye opening, huh? Like that, that you go to yeah there's places they're like this they're counter service places and there's there's a lot of them a lot of really famous ones super really dog that says in Chicago, like it is in new york it's not a street food no okay. no imagine trying to eat this on the street <laughs> wow you know this what this reminds me of it reminds me like of a like a pita bread a mexican sandwich you know <laughs> Like uh, maybe a falafel sandwich that fill up all this. This is. Oh, uh, he meant the actual hot dog sausage tasted the best. Oh, I got it because they uh, they steam the hot dogs, not grill them. That's why it's the most plump. Yeah, I get it. That's a good point. This is this is tough enough to eat just sitting like this. We are transporting you back to the Midwest. Here you go. No, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Is there juice coming out? Oh, he did it good. Eating something like this, it's like a special occasion thing. It doesn't have to be, but there's just so much stuff going on. And the celery salt for me is what does it. I don't know if you've tasted the celery salt. Celery salt. I think my baby's happy right now. <laughs> You're not her baby anymore, John. I know, I lost that one. Uh-oh. Right <laughs> Uh-oh, he's in trouble. We had a hot dog <laughs> cart on the side of Central Park. Then we had a Venezuelan hot dog spot in a bar that stays open till 4 a.m. And then we have this spot, which I think kids would love. If you didn't find something that you could eat in this video, I'd be surprised. If this video got you hungry, check out our Midtown Manhattan. I'm getting Virgin hungry Plains now, and it's midnight now. You've probably never heard of right near Times Square. Oh wow, <laughs> that was something. Yeah, Digital Island boy, I'm getting hungry too. Anyway, I think this uh, will pretty much wrap up my live stream for tonight because uh, I can't look at any more food. I got to sleep and hit the bed. If I uh, look at any more food, I'm going to be tempted to grab like a midnight snack and uh, I'll be kept up. So <laughs> let's lay off the food for a little bit. Mark Juarez says... Uh, a Mexican sandwich like that is called Samita. I'm sure you can find it in New York City. Maybe Miami. Okay. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, have a good night, everyone. Glad you could uh, join me on this hangout. It was fun to see 
Manhattan Henge and my reactions to it, and then uh, and then uh, going over to John's channel to see all the hot dogs and the pizza. This is a bad thing to do to be doing late at night. Should have done it at lunchtime. But yeah, good night, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for uh, all the support. Thanks for your super chats. Thanks for the moderators too for hanging around and. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.